Hello and welcome to Strive Defence Dialect. I am Brigadier Rakesh Bhatia, your host for the evening. As you can see on screen today, we have two very very special guests, Miss Lavina. Welcome to the show. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And General Ajay Chaturvedi, Senior Vice President of our group Strive. Sir, welcome to the show, sir. Good, good evening and welcome to Lavina also. On our Thank channel. you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Viewers, two special guests, two special tasks that I would like to give them. Miss Lavina, please, first of all, I'll request you to update us on the situation that is going on in Balochistan and KPK to include activities of BLA, TTP, and ISKP. And thereafter, <laughs> I'll request you to give the geostrategic uh, implications of whatever is happening, especially in Balochistan. That can be, uh, is the Pakistan's geostrategic importance goes away in case Balochistan is not stable. Sir. And what is whatever Miss Lavina is going to cover about ISKP and TTP, we'll also try and analyze that. That how does it affect? the overall importance of Pakistan, especially amongst the West and China. So before I hand over the mic first to Ms. Lavina, a very small little introduction. These were the three attacks that took place in 72 hours. Ms. Lavina, I saw it on your Twitter handle. You have covered these three. So I'll request you to cover these when I hand over the uh, stage to you. Now, this is one attack was at Gawadar, the other one was at Turbut. While Gawadar is a deep sea port, Turbut is the naval air base. These are their locations on the map. This is the Google image of the naval air base at Turbut. Now, one obvious common theme between the these attacks, the three attacks that I have spoken of in the first slide is that all these attacks were on China-Pakistan Economic Corridor projects. Like Gawadar is the port which is being managed by the Chinese. PNS Siddiqui, that is the naval base at Turbut, its core function is to provide air support to CPAC projects. And like I said, Gawadar port is the corner store of CPAC. Now, it's not for the first time the TTP and uh, BLA have carried out attacks which were inimical to Chinese interest in the area. They have done it in the past also. They, they killed Chinese engineers in August 18. Suicide bomber carried out string of attacks. Chinese consulate in Karachi was attacked. Gawadar Pearl Continent Hotel in May 19 was attacked. And Pakistan Stock Exchange was also attacked by this group. With this, I now request Ms. Lavina to cover the important aspects of whatever is happening in Pakistan in past few days. For our viewers, we have had a program earlier whose link is given in the description. However, just in case to, to, to maintain continuity, I will request you to start with this string of things that have happened so that we can connect with each other. Over to you, Ms. Lavina. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Sir, uh, there were actually four back-to-back -back, uh, operations by different terrorist groups inside Pakistan. And it took place in Gwadar. It took place in uh, Turbat. Then it took place in uh, Nushki. And, and, and uh, there was one more. The fourth one was... Uh, I... I, I so Gwadar, okay. Turbat, and 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 uh, and Shangli. Uh, yeah, Sha <laughs> Bisham, Bisham, <laughs> the the important yeah, one. Bisham. So, That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So I I don't uh, sir so in my uh, previous uh, in in the conversation that we were having, we were discussing the Gwadar port attack, and I had said that uh, BLA has particularly attacked a po a place where there are Chinese uh, engineers working. So on that day, they could not cause any any damage to, uh, I mean, the, the, at least there were not Chinese casualties, is what we know. But, and then suddenly there's this attack in Bisham, which nobody has claimed as yet. And, uh, you know, there's 
what was five uh, chinese have been killed so i do connect that you know the, the, these are uh, similar groups though um, pakistan tried to blame i mean pakistani experts try to blame it on iskp nobody has taken responsibility for that attack in bisham then there was an attack in nushki nushki uh, where the isi office is uh, yeah you know there is isi office which was attacked by bla it did not immediately make headlines it it uh, it made headline the next day uh, i believe because of gadar and turbat attack nushki did not get as much importance and um uh, so they were just ba- i i believe pakistan already knew that they are going to come under attack because as early as mid uh, march pakistani envoys were trying to uh, negotiate peace with both uh, bla and ttp and obviously bla would not come on the table uh, through taliban they were trying to negotiate peace with ttp this was um, 14th of march if i if i'm not wrong then on 16th march uh, ttp's faction hgf hafiz gul bahadur faction attacked um, in in uh, attacked pakistani military camp then um, on on um, what was it sir uh, i think um, 20th 18th 8 18th, 18th, 18th the gwadar attack took uh, sorry uh, 16th uh, no 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 I'm sorry 16th these guys um, H- uh, ttp carried out an attack then an 18th uh, pakistan retaliated on uh, 21st uh, there was this a- attack in gwadar uh, then um, no sorry on 21st there was a suicide yeah. bomb blast so there were so many attacks i'm honestly yeah. speaking i'm a little confused with the dates but there was a suicide bomb blast inside kandahar in which 14 people were killed uh, sorry 40 people were, at least 40 to 50 people were killed yes. and the guy was um, uh, from iskp and he had come from uh, russia he was an uzbek nationality who was studying in st petersburg that's all we know and he was according to taliban radicalized and trained in baluchistan by isi that's what taliban claims then um, so that was a um, suicide bomb blast and then we had gwadar attack then we had a uh, turbat attack and nushki so so since last two weeks there have been back to back attacks inside pakistan uh now when it comes to uh, i mean bla and ttp we, we we've gone to great details in our previous conversation i would like to add what uh, uh iskp was doing in between so you know while all these attacks were uh, being carried out uh, by pakistan and you know Tal- uh, ttp was carrying out its own attacks bla was carrying out its own attacks um there was this attack in russia which was claimed by I- isis so initially there was a confusion regarding who exactly carried out that attack um now there's a clarity that it was isis's russian network so some of uh, some people had also blamed in fact reuters had come out with a report saying that uh, the attack uh, was carried out by iskp so yeah. so uh, they had also profiled this guy called sanaulag the food uh, the fari i hope i'm pronouncing it right sanaula gafari who is the leader of iskp and um, so reuters was like this man is from afghan national army and he uh, joined taliban after the government uh, i mean you know after taliban took over afghanistan and all that so what happened was veterans from afghan national army and their intel uh, men came out and gave statements that this guy who heads iskp is not from afghan national army he was in fact a haqqani man it's also part of taliban but haqqani we all know uh, has direct links to pakistan correct right and uh, so this guy sanaula gafari he um, he had been trained uh, he had been sent by haqqanis to iskp apparently because they wanted iskp to take all the blame of uh, of the attack that were uh, being carried out by, uh, by haqqani group but they wanted to blame it on iskp so not just sanaula gafari some other men were also sent to um, from harkani group to iskp and that's exactly what is happening if you look at it almost all the attacks carried out by iskp in recent uh, days are basically um, 
US's enemy, you know, there was an attack in Russia in which we know close to 139 people were killed. So there was another attack a um, um, few days ago, uh, mid-March, in Iran. Because it happened in Iran, we are not aware that there were uh, close to um, 30 people killed in Karman. Yeah. And, and before that, uh, there were arrests being made inside, um, you know, uh, in, in, in Europe. And they were all guys connected to ISKP. So, um, uh, sir, as I said, that Kandahar uh, bomb blast guy, he had come from Russia and he was an ISKP guy. Then we have uh, ISKP being led by someone who has uh, direct links to Pakistani intelligence. So there is, uh, you know, I, I, I strongly be believe that Pakistan somehow knew about all the attacks that were going to take place. BLA and TTP honestly appear to be angels in front of what ISKP is doing. Yeah. I mean, they at least have a reason to do because TTP strongly believes that it wants to topple the Pakistani government and take over uh, that land. BLA says, leave our place. But ISKP, if you look at it, sir, recently it has not, uh, it has not claimed any land as such. These are loose network cell uh, of cells and uh, they have... Uh, their strategies, they have aged their strategies and they, they've uh, aged urban warfare, I should say. And and they've been going about carrying out attacks. They're not carrying out attacks inside Pakistan, are they? No. Mm -hmm. They're carrying out attacks against Taliban. They're carrying out attacks against European countries, against Iran. Yep. Okay. But tell me, this is, this is slightly, you know, worrying uh, because ISKP if he's done something and it is supported by Haqqani group, so ISI cannot be far away. Yeah, yeah. Because Taliban directly blames everything on ISI. Uh, so uh, apparently um, around the time when the Pakistani envoy was in Afghanistan, Tajikistan intelligence had met Pakistani intelligence. They were literally in Rawalpindi signing agree agreements where Tajikis, uh, so this is according to uh, an article which is written by Esanullah Esan. He claims that um, Pakistani intelligence requested Tajik to uh, shelter NRF, which is ex Northern Alliance, and the ISKP guys there, and, and, and whatever monetary benefits they'll be getting. So NRF, NRF is National Resistance Front, which is part, which is ex. Uh, Northern Alliance, which was um, so they are carrying out uh, attacks against Taliban. And uh, just yesterday, two people, Talibs, were killed by uh, because of the NRF attacks. Last week, there were four of them who were killed. And we all know NRF is sheltered by Tajik. So, uh, according to the deal which has been signed, um, Pakistani intelligence had asked Tajik Intel to to shelter these guys from ISKP also. And they are also attacking Taliban. So I believe there is a strategy is the, behind all this madness that Pakistan is trying to arm twist Taliban into agreeing to something. And very recently, the Taliban had uh, shared its, uh, you know, income-related. Uh, uh, I mean, there was this article which was uh, which I which was shared, and it, it was about how they are gaining. Uh, you know, I mean, how uh, what what their sources of income are. And most of it was uh, my, mining, smuggling, and all that. But emerald uh, mining and, and similar mining from these regions of Afghanistan. So I believe Pakistan wants a share there, or or there's more to it. I, I mean, I don't know how. To, where, yeah, I can't put my finger on it, but there's a uh, strategy behind all this madness. So either either Pakistan wants it, or ISI wants it for personal or, or <laughs> officers want it. It so could be anything. Sir, you wanted to come in. already. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one small thing I just want to add. This ISKP or ISIS, they, because of their uh, ideological orientation, they are th thinking in terms of not say, sovereignty of nations. They look for what is called Ummah. So all over, say they say the, the Muslim Ummah is one. And uh, uh, this is where they have a difference with Taliban. Taliban, after all, they have decided to restrict themselves to Afghanistan. So this is the main difference of this power struggle between the two. And that is why ISKP, which is a kind of a offshoot of ISIS, they and Taliban, they are not on the same page. And that is where the, the, the power struggle takes uh, keeps taking place between them, uh, be it in Pakistan. 
and Pakistan is trying to make use of it, or Western world is trying to. So this ISKP is all over the world. They are they they are trying to do this kind of a thing. That's what I thought. I'll add. So, so I'll this. Just add, I'll yes, just add please. something is it is so while they claim that they are um, you know I mean uh, that that they are uh, they want to create a Muslim caliphate and all that. So they have been carrying out attacks inside Pak uh, Turkey. ISIS. Uh, any ISIS related network here, so they, they have not been kind towards Muslim men, is what I am saying. My point is, I just do not take ideology as their, uh, you know, core, core, core thing on, on which they fight. I believe it is almost always the source of money, funding on which they fight, and they blame it on the ideology. Because every war happens because of either trade or geography. No, so uh, let me, I, what you are saying, I, I, I totally support it, Turkey but also what, comes my point tax, is, yeah. what is the ideological point in this? That caliphate, when it is established, all these existing boundaries of Turkey, uh, Turkey or uh, Afghanistan or Pakistan will all vanish. It is one single caliphate and that is what this power struggle which is going on. That is what my point was. So, and they will never create a caliphate in China because China doesn't have enough resources. So yes. they will create a caliphate only where there are enough resources, where they can smuggle oil, uh, uh, other minerals, right? <laughs> so my China point is not allowing them also. Money. And Xinjiang, Xinjiang does not have uh, that kind of resources. Xinjiang does not have this kind of resources. And Hui Muslims, wherever they are, uh, uh, say, in northern yep. part and all of China, they don't have these kind of resources. So China, they will and, not and go. Sir, where se nikale ka bhi kaise, sir, Xinjiang se? There is no access also. There is no. And that is where Balochistan comes handy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a sea coast. Hai. It's very difficult to you know keep everything in uh, sing choti choti wo, uh, boats or usse leke, a lot of smuggling can take place. So, but yeah. my question to both of you is I ask, we, we have been talking, in fact, uh, when I was preparing for this podcast, I was actually looking at BLA, TTP, you know hurting Pakistan and especially Pak Army. ISKP ka to kuch bhi nahi hai sir Pakistan Army ke against. To kya, shall we take Absolutely. this? True. Shall we take this? ISI still controls ISKP sir? ISI, I don't think I, uh, yes, ISI is to that extent. Now Taliban is getting rope so they will try to support uh, uh, um, uh, IS, ISKP because and uh, because uh, uh, Al Qaeda has gone into decline. Hmm. The TTP has gone rogue. Taliban have gone rogue. So Pakistan, what uh, ISI uh, resource they are left with? So that is why <laughs> this is the power struggle which keeps going on. But sir, ISI may be a problem, hai na, ke Punjabi group or uh, Pashtun groups are also fighting with each other. So that is yes, also yes. probably a reason that. Uh, say, so, so that yeah, uh, you would know better than anyone else that Pashtun claims that uh, for thousands of years they are Pashtuns, yes, for only yes. 1200 years they are Muslims, and only for 70 years they are Pakistanis. Pakistan, so yes, that identity uh, crisis is always there. So, Lavina, you want to add on to anything specific? And before we move on to whatever has happened, any connection that you want to highlight before we go ahead and discuss on the strategic importance of Baluchistan? uh, I don't want to be uh, sounding repetitive, but uh, something that I did not cover in the uh, previous conversation was that uh, the guys who carried out uh, attacks, uh, the BLA guys who carried out uh, uh, attack in uh, Turbat, uh, uh, they they were... uh, guys who had um, faced enforced disappearance and they were tortured by ISI. Two of them. So out of four, two of them were guys who were tortured by ISI and they had undergone that, you know, uh, suffering and all that. So it makes sense to me why BLA would choose such people against uh, Pakistan army. And so uh, I was, um, so when I read about that, I I also um, just two days back, Pakistan, you know, Balochistan was, uh, you know, it's, it's in 1948, um, Baluchistan was taken over uh, on, on 25th of March. From what I'm 27th, not 27th, 27th, 27th. 27th. Yeah, so it was it was uh, Black Day. They 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 call it yeah. the Black Day, right? So so on that day, I was going through some statistics. Um, there are about 500 people 
in in 2023 who faced forced disappearance just in last uh, last 3 months about 34 of them either um, they uh, they faced forced disappearance or they they found their bodies were found and there like about 34 of them so this these statistics nobody takes this up not even united oh, this garang baloch is the march from first to to turba turba to quetta quetta to now going to islamabad this is all because of that your disappearance of uh, uh, people there and there yeah. uh, the shazia ilahi onwards that is how the thing started when uh, uh, this 2004 uh, Uh, Musharraf, uh, she was then doctor, said, uh, so "There's nobody was is to be blamed." Uh-huh. Yes. So that, when a, when an army officer was uh, the, uh, the the perpetrator of the perpetrator, the race, uh-huh. and uh, Musharraf, the three guests, this lady the doctor was there. Three guests, correct. Kajia Ilahi or something, her name was. But actually, sir, Balochistan ka problem you you know better than anybody else. This is the fourth phase of the insurgency or or terrorism. Yes. In fact, from insurgency, they have now graduated to terrorism. and this majid brigade this is a brigade which is for suicide and there were two brothers who the first one tried to kill bhutto when he had visited in 1974 in baluchistan so he tried to launch a suicide attack on him he was not successful and the younger brother again had committed uh, uh, you know suicide bombing so the majid brigade is basically named on the name of these two suicide killers so the interesting thing about it that they are told to choose their targets choose their ways they go back and meet their families and they tell them that we are going for a mission and we are not going to come back so they are highly motivated people who are part of majid brigade so all these targets like what uh, lavina was mentioning this is basically personal enmity is also it plays a very very big role that either disappearance or killing has taken place that's why they select a particular targets So, uh, I'll just add to it. I I forgot uh, to uh, talk. I mean, no, tell you about it. It is about uh, the Ingamadi style of attacks that they have adopted. So, Ingamadi style of attack was originally an ISIS style of attack, where the suicide uh, bombers would go in. And um, so, you remember that uh, attack in Balochistan, where uh, this female had blown herself, and many Chinese, uh, you know, uh, the what is it called? Um, the uh, which institute is it, sir? Uh, they 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 run a language institute, right? Chinese. Correct, sir. I forgot at the tip of my tongue. So, uh, I mean, so I, um, yeah. So so uh, there's this Chinese institute which uh, where this woman had blown herself, and you know, uh, multiple uh, people Chinese were injured. So we live. particularly targets chinese so there is ingamadi style which you would have noticed even uh, during the gwadar attack they these guys go in so if if they want the suicide bomber is given an opportunity to choose whether he wants to return or not i mean if yeah. he feels he cannot cause enough damage he can return yes so uh, that is um, Uh, that 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 they've taken a leaf out of ISIS's book and they've adopted that strategy. Pretty much like you know, ISI would have uh, trained them for it, and we really uh, <laughs> took that strategy. Is now that institution you're referring? Uh, we've just received a message from Jalal Sudhakar ji. It is called the Confucius Institute. Oh yeah, we are taking with the Chinese <laughs> language as well as uh, soft power of China is through Confucius and uh, yeah, That's absolutely, correct. sir. So, and and so these guys have been following this ingamadi style of attack which is inspired by uh, yeah. isis this Absolutely. one one thing uh, rakesh here one sure. needs to take into account that uh, at one point of time uh, in the, the population uh, demography was 61% baluchis in baluchistan which had come down to 52% today there was a report i think somewhere i today just about half an hour back i saw that uh, chinese are going still full steam on cpc and now a lot of chinese are coming into baluchistan and they are saying the way the population of chinese is increasing in baluchistan by 2048 it will become instead of baluchistan it will become chinistan because chinese would be in majority yes. so therefore this is firstly uh, say baluchis had that uh, uh, rough end of the stick when uh, uh, 79 onwards these uh, afghans started coming uh, 
which are almost three lakh of uh, people. So northern area, the Quetta and all this all uh, Afghans uh, have come and settled. And now this is something which no, without any development uh, and resources being extracted. Say, I'll just give you one small figure that 40% of gas is sui gas. Yes. And Afghanistan, yeah, this Baluchistan is getting only 8% revenue. Rest all is going. So yes. therefore, this is this is where the the uh, BLA is is what uh, Lavina is saying that they are targeting Chinese. They are targeting Chinese because they are feeling threatened now. So, so they know add... that. Uh, yeah, please. So, so uh, now that Chatur, uh, Sir has mentioned that Chinese are moving it again, reminds me of the Chinese militia concept which was resurrected last year, wherein they would send, uh, so there's this Chinese uh, militia, which is called PAFD, I think um, Armed Forces Department, I, do, I think People's Armed Forces Department, P basically. PAPF, People's Armed Forces. Uh, PAFD, PAFD. PAPF, and, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something of that sort. So this was a concept that existed in uh, Mao's uh, regime, but yes. uh, and then they, they had forgotten about it. It is basically a private military which is made up of civilians, and they were to be used if there is, in, you know, in case there's a protest, they they they'll be deployed. So uh, other than what what they have as police and paramilitary, PAFD will be militia. They will walk around as uh, civilians on normal days, and if there's a protest, if there's any internal issue, these guys will be deployed. But now China has come up with the strategy to utilize PAFD uh, in, uh, you know, wherever the BRI projects exist. So it makes sense to me why so many Chinese are being moved in. So it is very likely that these guys belong to Chinese militia. They will move in as uh, I'll, civilians and uh, nobody will I'll object. add on to what you're saying. Xinjiang had a production and construction core. So all the work which was carried out, including the uh, road G219, which was made from Xinjiang to Tibet, the first road, was by this militia production and construction corps. This corps was in existence in all the military region. They were disbanded subsequently, but Xinjiang construction and production corps, uh, corps still exists in Xinjiang. And wherever they find, these are like what you said they are militias who are trained for their self-defense and security so uh, they are the one who are sent and the local police which is there uh like let's say in gilgit baltistan wherever there was they have been given the responsibility sho level officers have been given the responsibility of protecting the uh, chinese camps which exist where these people stay sir you wanted to say something sir please yes ask. very interesting this Post this Confucius Institute attack, if you notice the Chinese, the population in Baluchistan has suddenly started increasing. And this corroborates what uh, Lavina said, PF, uh, this uh, People's uh, Armed... Uh, People's Armed Police Force, uh, PAPF. Uh, yes. yes. So, uh, one more interesting thing that happened was, so while Taliban and uh, Pakistani, uh, your Pakistan government and army, they, they were having a war of words, Pakistan, one of the Pakistani ministers said, we will take down Bakhan corridor. I found it very interesting. So because that part of uh, Afghanistan is like a tail end of Afghanistan and, uh, you know, reaching China, it makes sense that uh, Pakistan army wants to take over that corridor and take control over it. And uh, they have threat literally threatened Taliban that uh, we'll take over Bakhan corridor. And for whatever reason, they are arm twisting. I do believe they have... Uh, that dream of taking over Wakhan corridor and bringing it under their control, Pakistanis. No, because Wakhan that is, corridor, the, uh, uh, awesome. very very difficult terrain, but the yes. uh, that is that is where the uh, connectivity between uh, yeah. uh, Afghanistan ETM, and China, that is, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, and even for China to come in, that is a that is any time in case if they want to come land route they want to use and not CPEC route. That is what it would be. So therefore, okay. Pakistan army yeah, will be probably doing it for the securing for the Chinese at the same time, cutting down increase of Ugyur, uh, that ETM. 
into sir, Afghanistan. Sir, uh, though uh, we have deviating devi deviated a bit, but it's a very interesting one. So we may continue it for some more time. I will add a very interesting aspect to what we are saying, sir. As we are aware, Gilgit, Baltistan, and this area which is uh, abutting uh, Xinjiang province, and there they have this ETIM you have mentioned, sir. So these are Shia dominated areas. And the Pakistanis were trying to relocate Sunnis in this area. And as per the inputs that I have received, Chinese have told Pakistanis not to move in Sunnis because they want to uh, let this Shia belt remain in Gilgit, Baltistan as a buffer between the mainline Sunni militants and the Uyghur militants. <laughs> but it is not in uh, Pakistan's interest because. That's correct, sir. With Shia, Shia being there in uh, Shia and Hazara being there, uh, and uh, along with Tajiks in uh, and Uzbeks uh, and uh, Mazar-e Sharif area and the complete northern area, it is not in Pakistan's interest because Taliban. But, China, uh, but it it, uh -huh. it is definitely in Chinese interest sir, to keep, keep uh, it is the Sunni militants China. away. Yes, interesting so, days ahead, sir. sir. <laughs> uh, so so it, there's a lot of confusion that is uh, going on, sir. Sir, uh, with your permission, we move ahead, sir. And now yes. the second part of the discussion is now Balochistan is on the boils. Like what uh, Ms. Lavina had said that at one time, Khan of Kalat was actually, you know, uh, Pakistan or Mr. Jinnah forced annexion, uh, annexation despite having a standstill agreement with him. Like in case of uh, Kashmir also, we they did the same thing. But sir, what is the geostrategic importance of well, there Pakistan? There is a difference. Sorry, there is yes. a difference. Yes. Uh, in Kalat, they forced them, and in Pakistan, in Kashmir, they breached their own agreement. Standard yes, agreement was with Pakistan, which they, which they broke and they attacked uh, uh, yes. uh, Kashmir. So, sir, yes. Pakistan, like we all know, was created because of its geostrategic location access to warm water to the or spread of communism has to be stopped and all that thing today balochistan is on boil pakistan's writ hardly runs there just a scenario building sir i am doing if balochistan tomorrow does not cooperate and pakistan army and the chinese are not able to operate freely in balochistan how will the geostrategic importance of pakistan be compromised so this is to General Chaturvedi, sir. Lavina, you can please uh, chip in when you feel you have a point to make. Uh, uh, Rakesh, a very interesting uh, scenario you have tried to build. You know, actually, Baluchistan's relevance in the whole uh, this geograph uh, the geography of Baluchistan in the geopolitical scenario is very important. Just let me put it this way: in certain things. You see, uh, uh, in the, on the Makran coast, the first we will say the maritime portion. That Makran coast, Gwadar, which is there, 150 kilometers uh, south of uh, Chabahar. And Chabahar is in uh, Sistan, Balochistan. Now, in case if Cha this thing goes, uh, I mean, Pakistan does not have a control on Gwadar, what will happen? The whole lot of their resources will have to be in Karachi and Port Qasim. Now, that means their access to Gulf of Oman goes. Gulf of Oman goes means the transit route of oil and everything goes away. Third thing is that as far as Americans are concerned, it is in their interest because the uh, Baluchistan put kind of a sandwich between Pakistan and Iran. Now, Iran, the Bandar Jask and others and further American interest in Bahrain. So now with all this thing, in case if it is taken out, Russians get affected because route to Central Asia gets effect, impacted. Uh, Iran gets affected. Uh, Iran, of course, uh, uh, has got different kind of a fear because in case in 1870, if I remember correctly, 1870, British had divided these uh, three areas where uh, Baluchis were there in uh, Iran, uh, Pakistani Baluchistan, and uh, that uh, um, uh, 
uh, uh, that area of uh, southern area of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, this is the map uh, you can refer to. Sir. Yes, you can see that Afghanistan is that lower portion. That is also you can see that uh, darker, darker portion darker part of shape. it is in uh, Iran, in Afghanistan, and of course in Pakistan. Then first is that access goes. Iran gets threatened because Balochistan, Sistan will go away from them also. Even Afghanistan will get affected. One. Second is the kind of minerals it has. Gas I mentioned. They have got about 6 trillion bar barrel of oil reserves. Balochistan. And that would be lost. Second thing is they have got copper and gold reserve substantial. And certain other things are also there. But copper and gold reserves are quite substantial. So that would be lost. Now as far as China is concerned, they will also be losing it out. They wanted to have access to the lithium reserves in Afghanistan. If Baluchistan is not there, how will they have that access? So this Baluchistan overall is a very, very important cog in the geostrategic. And everyone is trying to have their own way. Now, what advantage it will have uh, to America? They will have a very clear-cut run in the uh, Persian Gulf. Because Bahrain would be safe. Now, China in 2020, uh, they had a pact with uh, Iran for this uh, 25 years that 400 billion they will in be investing and they were eyeing Banda Jask and all. Now, that will all go. So, Chinese interest, access to uh, um, uh, Afghanistan through Balochistan. Uh, then containment of India would be difficult because in that case, that route to INS, INSTC route, that International North-South uh, uh, Trade Corridor, that will be impacted quite substantially. So Chinese would be affected, Americans would be advantaged, Iran would be affected, Afghanistan would be affected. India may have because Baluch by nature are there. They have got their uh, tribal affiliation, but they are uh, uh, secular. And they are looking forward to India, whether Naila Kadri and all those things, Bramdag uh, Bukti and all those things, they look forward to India. And uh, that is why they feel that India would be a, have an advantage. That's what my sense is. Sir, uh, continuing with what you have said, sir, this is very interesting uh, uh, yeah, your yeah, yeah. second point is gas pipeline. Uh, gas yes. pipeline, very interesting thing. You know, this, what is, what was the original, uh, this IPI, Iran, Pakistan, India pipeline, which was supposed to have come to Fazilka, but it didn't work out because India backed out. India wants to have via Oman another pipeline uh, uh, directly from, otherwise from parts. Iran on their part, they have made their uh, uh, pipeline. But what Pakistan has not been able to because of the Baluchistan on the boil. And they don't have money also. Because otherwise it's supposed to go to Benazirabad, that is uh, uh, Nawa, uh, what is that called? Uh, Nawab Shah. Nawab Shah Nawab. In, uh, going to Nawab Shah. So that will also be impacted. So Pakistan would be uh, also quite substantially impacted. Absolutely. Sir, I will draw your attention to the first point which is mentioned, U.S. is very uneasy as Gawadar gives China an entry to the warm waters of Indian Ocean. Gawadar also provides a place to keep an eye on China, Iran and Russia. All three countries U.S. is interested in. You are you are absolutely right. Recently, recently they, they one of the uh, uh, congressmen has said that yes. uh, uh, the, the, he, has, he has flagged this issue. You know, that uh, from Gwadar, uh, uh, because ch that is where the Chabahar is important. Ch Chabahar, Zaidan, uh, Zaranj, Dalaram, and on to uh, Tajikistan, that route is there. And from there it goes, uh, one far goes to Russia, uh, via Uzbekistan, and another to uh, Azerbaijan, to Turkey. So all that would be impacted. So Americans are least interested for China to have access to this area. And, uh, and, and in case, in case, sir, China is the, the way uh, what uh, Lavina has explained the situation uh, uh, targeting CPAC, 
and you had mentioned that china is probably desperate to make sure that the cpac works but in case china is not able to access gawadar port there will be a vacuum in this area sir in in this on the mouth of uh, strait of hormuz so there is uh, you know anybody's guess that who is going to fill that vacuum it is going to be us navy supported by indian navy probably yes because the pakistan is getting bottled into um, uh, their own oil supply would be impacted because their energy is short so uh, karachi only and that is why if you notice what iran uh, this china is playing uh, another trick they are feeling that baluchistan in case they are working out yet another option they are trying to buy those two islands of karachi that bandu and buddal yes. so that Correct, they continue to have access to arabian sea and through arabian sea because they have got a base facility in uh, uh, djibouti and all those things so that is where they they want to have so that is another aspect which we need to take into account uh, when we are talking Slavina, about you can uh, chip in uh, no so so this part uh, i was just listening to you okay, know fine, because fine, uh, fine. when it comes to strait of hormuz i do see uh, american ships accompanying you know all these uh, vessels and they, they they've been guarding this place since very long i mean i live in uae no That's because right. america is sitting in fujairah yeah yeah and now in case if uh, uh, baluchistan goes away so across that chabahar uh, is the only thing so yeah. this iran would be this baluchistan in case if it uh, that comes Falls. into the boil so chabahar would be impacted gwadar would be impacted so access to bahrain would be easy for them for six uh, uh, fleet which is there in bahrain of uh, us that that will have a, a advantage yeah Sir, it, 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 i one. i will draw your attention to this slide i thought this is a very very interesting slide sir yes that kawadar is one deep sea port in case this is made functional look at the connectivity probably one of the best Dubai. in the world it's, it's the best in the world you look at the connectivity it has to so many countries had pakistan realized this thing and not exploited the situation in uh, uh, baluchistan probably gawadar baithe baithe sir rent aana tha inko sir no no if you if you notice 2009 to 2013 it was made by singapore correct and china Uh, saw the opportunity and they purchased it and they have got the access and from there they want to go to have access from here to kashgar correct kashgar they want to have this pipeline will be working towards kashgar so this uh, malakka dilemma which uh, hu jintao mentioned in uh, when he was the president of uh, and first secretary of uh, supreme leader of china that would be obviated because then they will be going through straight away through from there to uh, gilgit baltistan and on to zhengjiang uh, 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 so that that is what is a very important part of it and china has invested hello a lot because of this because they are looking forward to it and by doing this kind of a thing they will be able to not only this they will be able to control also american access into a Persian Gulf and China is also energy short country. Yes, they also yes. don't have adequate energy, so, so they are looking for options. Uh, so all Central over. Asian Republic countries, sir, China, uh, up to Nepal. In fact, if you really look at it, okay, it cannot come through us, but as because Nepal is part of BRI, so up to ne- sir, sir. Another, I would like to add here. So I yes, feel Gwadar and uh, Myanmar are. plan a and b you know b and c of of uh, china to enter uh, seas and to avoid strait of malacca i see it that way you know to 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 avoid that congestion strait of malacca and to avoid the fish hook sources network and getting yeah. detected they they have chosen myanmar and they have chosen gwadar ah sitwe and of course sitwe sitwe yeah sitwe and, and myanmar and, yeah right and and if you look at it uh, today tajikistan uh, uzbekistan kazakhstan they have enough influence of uh, 
uh, you know china just today i was going through one of the russian telegram channels it is pro wagner uh, channel so uh, so he he was uh, he, he had posted about this uh, russian run school in tajikistan where they're teaching about russian colonialism i mean as in you know tajikistan was a colony of uh, russians so um, maybe in a, in a decade or so the republic yeah so maybe in a decade or so csto csto will become obsolete and yeah. you know uh, they would uh, want to not have russians uh, you know like uh, be ruling over them indirectly and they might uh, just switch completely to china baluchistan is part of their great game that yes. russian from the last century itself they had been looking forward to warm waters of uh, indian ocean and this is where uh, uh, what are assumes great importance because that is where they will be why, coming so this new great game that is now being played so no country wants to be out of this new great game that is coming up the only difference now is that earlier days it used to be army and their patrols and domination now it is the proxies who are being used by various countries to take control of a particular situation now directly this armies also. are not fighting so do you know the clash of interest between russia and china here yeah yes yes resources resources because russians have if you notice all their geography they don't have access to any of the uh, say warm water port yes, so yeah. they are looking forward and the instc uh, is a very very important cog in their wheel of uh, uh, in their uh, economic uh, activity they are looking yes. forward from there it will go to uh, and in their areas because despite having uh, armenia azerbaijan war uh, russians still have influence in Ar azerbaijan and that yeah. is where the entire this uh, uh, caspian basin and uh, this uh, central asian republics uh, uh, they assume great importance in his uh, scheme of things and china of course they have got pipeline from turkmenistan going to china and all those things but they are looking forward to pars that iranian gas which is a cheaper gas and they will be like and you you, you look at it like this kashgar from east coast of china is about the 3500 kilometers correct from this route from gwadar it is just 1500 kilometers oh. so what correct. is what is better for china <laughs> going to uh, gwadar to kashgar or uh, going from shanghai to kashgar so that is where uh, the difference lies so there there was also one news of uh, you know china accumulating uh, this uh, gas from buying gas from kazakhstan apparently they have a straight uh, gas pipeline, pipeline, pipeline. Yes, so, pipeline yeah. yes so you know uh, they are going to exploit uh, everything in 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 central asia Actually, every other in country. central asia the maximum gas is with turkmenistan they have got the maximum gas and that is how i mean theek hai Tajikistan does not have a gas and all. It is more of a hydro resources. Uzbek has uh, burned their fingers by finishing off uh, Iral Sea, and Kazakh have got other things like uranium and all those. But they have oil. They have oil, gas, both they have. But actual gas is from Turkmenistan, which China wants to take. Uh, and I'll their request pipeline. My viewers... Sorry, sorry. Okay. I'll request my viewers to please press the like button because number of likes are less than number of people who are watching. Sir, this is what I feel various countries are supporting. Which uh, organization, though I have restricted myself to BLA and TTP because I had not actually considered ISKP initially. This could be. This is purely based on the possible interests that various countries have in this area. i would like you to give your opinion afghanistan would it like to support bla as well as ttp sir uh ttp yes bla uh, is uh, as far as afghanistan is concerned uh, uh, bla they would be uh, chari they would use it to uh, travel pakistan but definitely they will not use because bla means tomorrow in case baluchistan gains independence or something it will impact uh, nimroz and all that uh, helmand and all the area of uh, afghanistan so uh, that is there there i have got a little doubt as far as usa is concerned 
USA, uh, their interests keep changing. Right sir, now, we lost your me, voice uh, in between, sir. We lost, lost your voice, sir. Uh, did you mention about Iran, sir? Uh, 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 no, not Iran. Iran, of course, you, you, are, you are absolutely right that Iran, they will, uh, BLA, Iran will not be interested in BLA because it is it is going to impact this Sistan, Balochistan uh, uh, area. And BLA has got certain bases there also, which uh, this Jashe, uh, uh, Adal and all those things attack, if you remember in the month of January, which happened. Correct. So again, they will not do it. USA, uh, right now... Uh, Sir, I have put both thumbs up and question mark as far as USA is concerned with respect to BLA as well as TTP. Lalina, you know, you, you look at to... it, BLA, they have, US, UK, along with Pakistan, have declared it a terrorist organization. But uh, Americans have no such love lost for <laughs> terrorist or no terrorist organization. Absolutely, so long sir. it serves their purpose. So, so because, uh, if they... I, I do believe yeah. they, they, they strongly support because uh, one, the arms, uh, even the BLA guys, they're so well armed. Look at Taliban's Badri, uh, you know, Badri commandos. Look at TTP's commando. They are also well armed. So there's enough money being pumped. You know, Pakistan might blame India for arming. I, I don't think we have that kind of deep pockets to ever do all this because somebody with a lot of money is doing it. And these guys are pretty well armed. So this is why I strongly believe that USA... Lavina, what do, you, what do you think Americans did when they left all the arms when they ran away from Afghanistan? <laughs> yeah, and Taliban. So this is where I believe Taliban is indirectly helping BLA because all that that they had left. The BLA guys are now carrying, you know, uh, even the most recent uh, attack in Turbat. The guys who died, they were carrying American ammunition which is left behind in Afghanistan. How did they get it? Through Taliban most probably. So, so this is why I feel Taliban is very indirectly helping Balochistan. Uh, sorry, BLA guys. I mean, uh, as long as they are making money, I think, uh, you know. They are okay. Everyone Actually, is, yeah, they are okay. I mean, uh, though Rakesh knows uh, a little more than <laughs> me about Afghanistan, but my sense is that they can sell off anything for money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Afghan I simple, agree. they are uh, transactional people. And they say, kal dekhenge. Kal dekhenge. Aaj to hai, paisa bana lo. That kind of attitude they have. But as far as Middle East is concerned, yes, they will be supporting BLA and all those things. Uh, Saudi, uh, I think UAE and uh, Sir, BLA, Saudi why I have put thumbs up is basically because of Saudi's enmity with Iran. Yes. Sir, um, this is, this, that's your right. You know, I, I do believe, uh, you know, uh, it is not as it's shown in here when I live here. So often it's said that GCC does not like Iran. Yet, there is so much trade happening between GCC and Iran. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. Last year, I, I live in UAE. So uh, last year, there was back-to-back -back, um, attacks, drone attacks in the capital of UAE. And, um, and, and uh, this happened one week before UAE's NSA was to leave for Iran. So uh, the attacks were carried out by IRGC. So you, uh, UAE and Iran decided, no, you know, we will not uh, let the peace process be hampered because of uh, IRGC's uh, you know, activities. And they went ahead and opened an uh, embassy. Today, Saudi and uh, Iran have also thought their relations. So, I mean, uh, even, even you are saying, I, I, I'll give you a very interesting input. Few years back, I was in uh, uh, GCC headquarters, and they said, "The uh, the uh, as an individual, if somebody has got maximum investment in UAE, it is Raf Sanjani, <laughs> who was the president of Iran. He had the maximum investment in, and through that, uh, 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 his proxies and all those things, he has got maximum." We have so Iranian therefore, bank here. We have Iranian restaurants. So not just in UAE, it's along along uh, GCC and especially Qatar, Oman, they have such great relations. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Saudi, uh, they now they have reopened their embassies. So they're thawing their relations. At the same time, they're not besties. They're not best friends. And China, but, China is trying. China is trying to you know <laughs> mend the relation between uh, 
Saudi and uh, Iran. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, but, uh, think, uh, even, uh, even in pre-2017 era, Saudi, Iran, they had great trade relations. They had great yeah. trade relations with UAE. Dis you know, even despite having a great trade relation, their ships were being captured by... Uh, so I, at times, do feel that IRGC has a brain of its own. It functions independently of how... Uh, no, no, you look at, look, at, look at the Israel-Hamas, uh, this thing also. Who's supporting True. whom? You know, at yeah. time it's so confusing. When I was making this matrix, I was so confused because one factor was prompting me, no, it's not like that. So that's why I left it for a discussion. That uh, yeah. I have put bombs up as well as But TTP mark. you have made is absolutely right. TTP, Sir. absolutely you are right. And uh, TTP has got their own design. And initially, uh, um, uh, Taliban supported them. Now it is becoming uh, a threat to, not only to... Uh, Pakistan, it is uh, on a later date, probably it will become a threat to even Afghanistan. Sir, that I, is think what we, we'll, uh, I think we'll go on to questions, sir. Our discussion has actually. Uh, sir, the first question is Jack in and out of box. Sir, you can read the questions. Okay, yeah. I will read it out, sir. Ask possibility of ISI attacking the Chinese and blaming the TTP to draw China into the talks with Afghanistan to control TTP. Your views. Sir, I, ISI can yeah. do it. ISI can ISI, do it? Yes. No. Uh, so they, they've been doing this. They, 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 they are hi, hi, big hypocrites. If you look at their history with the USA, they've done it to USA, they'll definitely do it to China. Sir. No, their the aim is to make money so that they can uh, say kind of a uh, uh, fund uh, insurgencies in uh, say Kashmir Sir, and India you. and other places. Uh, so they, they can do this kind of thing. Hear me? Yeah, I hear I can hear you. Are you able to hear us, Lavida? I think she's I not think able her to hear us. Her frame is frozen. Her frame is frozen. Just we go ahead, sir. Ask Park Pashtun doubled from 8% in 1951 to 18% in 2023. 4.32 crore add 1.6 crore Afghan Pashtuns is equal to 6 crore Pashtuns. Are they too big now for 13 crore Pakistan Punjabis with 6 to 7 lakh Pak Pakistan Punjabi armies? He's given a lot of statistics, sir. This is JBJB. No, actually, it, uh... Since we will we will restrict our uh, this kind of a thing, there is definitely there has been an increase in the Pashtun population in Baluchistan. We will restrict ourselves to Pash uh, this this only, uh, uh, and uh, so the northern portion of Baluchistan uh, up to Quetta and all is either Pashtuns or Pakhtuns. When I say yeah. Pakhtun or Pashtun, Pakhtuns are those who are on the uh, southern side of uh, 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 Durand line and Pashtuns are those who are on the northern side of the uh, uh, Durand line. So it is increased because of the uh, uh, those things, refugees coming and migrants coming. So therefore, that is that is causing inter ethnic problems within Baluchistan. And that definitely is going to, imp that is impacting the Baluchistans. Uh, uh, I mean, the Baluchis are feeling threatened in their own country. On one side, they are getting threatened because of Chinese. Second side, right. they are getting threatened because of the uh, say Pashtuns. So therefore, they feel that in, in our own, in their own country, uh, they will not. I believe recently, Buktis were not allowed to tie their turban the way they used to tie. Yes, that's that correct. That is what is happening. I, I read somewhere. I don't know how far it is true or something. So therefore, their own lifestyle and everything is getting impacted quite substantially. And therefore, there is a need. There is a definitely there is a need uh, for Pakistan to address it. If they don't address it, uh, they will have problems. Okay. Next question, sir. Lavina, you can hear us now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sir, it's okay. Sir, Kal R.P. Singh is saying China rejected Pakistan's proposal to expand cooperation under CPAC. Citing economic and security concern, now Chinese killed if China continue to sitting up hornet's nest, would China like to tackle it? 
so china had to send in its marine commandos to gwadar that should uh, tell us uh, you know uh, the kind of situation that they are in and they live in these enclosed uh, areas where uh, no no pakistani can uh, access that area directly you know so so that should give us an idea of the kind of security situation there they have cctv cameras you know watching them and uh, providing security but uh, my point being that uh, chinese are not safe inside pakistan and they know it they know it very well so uh, this is exactly why i believe they don't want also there is no return of investment happening yeah. as of it most of their bri projects are not uh, you know making any profit so like you said last time that that bri projects are like sinking titanic right now Yeah. No, but yeah. uh, one thing is there, Lavina. You may like to consider one small point. Uh, you, as you said, that they have sent marine commandos to uh, uh, Gwadar. Uh, they have put uh, CCTV and they have uh, uh, started providing <coughs> Chinese militia for their own projects and all those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let us consider that. What is the relevance of CPEC for China? CPEC for China is very important in the sense that. not only that uh, energy resources from uh, uh, say pars or uh, say you uh, persian gulf area let's put it this way uh, going to um, uh, zinjiang and on to <coughs> china that's very important also that uh, um, uh, hydro projects in the northern indus area that they are also very important so with all this thing i don't think that china will quit cpc so, no no so they will not easily. quit they will not quit because uh, no, they, they, they are not going to expand they are not Tension going to amount. expand but they are going to they if you, if you look at it they tried <coughs> marine commandos now they are sending in chinese militia you know so they are uh, trying their level best to save these projects because so much investment has already gone so i don't believe no. they will quit but they will not expand as of now maybe for next 2 3 years they will expand jitna kharch kar diya hai utna they will protect they would yeah, not like yeah, to yeah. expand yeah. Yeah. and moreover if gawadar uh, they don't go ahead with cpac actually this is the linchpin of the entire bri project that goes fat so they have to make <laughs> sure that uh, you know this this succeeds next question is from rajesh sir is this a coincidence that pakistan <laughs> afghanistan and iran have got involved in the way we see it or is it some big game to keep the trouble away no, I, Lavina, I, i couldn't get the uh, basically you know, i couldn't get the question the uh, problem you want me to read it again sir yes is this a coincidence that pakistan afghanistan and iran have got involved in the way we see it or is it some big game to keep the trouble away sir uh, i do believe that uh, you know russia and america are trying to spread their allies thing if you look at israel hamas war they are basically trying to keep israel busy because israel was supplying ammunition and things were uh, even american resources are spread thin because of israel hamas war and then we have south korea north korea issue which has started again uh again if you, if you look at it azerbaijan armenia you know they, their resources spread you know all their allies are clashing with each other so it makes sense to me that while my war is going on here i'll try to keep my uh, you know enemy busy elsewhere also so iran uh, if, if if iran and pakistan are kept busy with each other it's america and russia mm-hmm. behind them who are funding them and so once iran gets uh, iran has been supplying a lot of drones to russians if if iran gets uh, in, you know it, it is involved in any sort of turmoil beat israel th- their their resources also spread thin if, if they have to supply to hezbollah hamas uh, here uh, if, if if pakistan and iran do get involved i don't think they'll get involved but um, because of taliban pakistan has been kept busy pakistan is an american ally which uh, <laughs> which i believe used to send mercenaries to lot of places where america wanted it to fight so uh, you want to add yeah the first thing is let us see if there is a problem exists you know durand line divided pashtuns so that is why any government which becomes slightly stable in afghanistan becomes anti pakistan 
the history is replete with the examples you would know better than anyone else second thing is you look at in case if baluchistan goes out of hand it is going to impact sistan baluchistan of iran so iran would be impacted quite substantially so this problem exists second is that this power game will continue between russia and america because russians are looking forward to that to save their instc china is looking forward to gwadar americans are trying to save their assets in uh, persian gulf so therefore this thing is remains as as pakistan is concerned pakistan has its own interest to keep it uh, uh, i mean they are they are, they are getting the uh, wrong end of the stick in this case because if baluchistan goes out of their hand their resource base gets substantially reduced 44% of area neither they will be able to test their missiles nor they will have gas 40% of their gas will go oil reserves which is there about 6 trillion barrel that will go away copper and uh, gold reserve will go away those baba budan and all those mine fields of this rock salt and all that will go away bauxite borax <laughs> and all that thing will go away so therefore iran and domination Pakistan, and domination of and the domination, seas and domination of seas so therefore their interests are becoming say collinear so that is why uh, and this power struggle between the three big powers is in any case is going on that is there uh sir uh, dr nindesh purli uh, there seems to be some confusion in the question either the beginning or in the end we haven't got the question so i am as of now not reading this question sir we go ahead and then we have the next question is from john sudhakar ji sir we should be mindful of islands of convenience in 2012 one pakistan intelligence corps officer said that baluchistan by 2030 would be a chinese province uh i i want this place sorry say again may not be 2030 but maybe 2048 what what i just uh, quoted yeah yeah i i was just saying yeah, the reinforces what sir had been saying it would pretty much turn into a chinese province rain uh, reinforces what sir was uh, sir was saying earlier so what what uh, sudhakar ji is saying is has got a merit in this because chi- chinese interests are quite substantial in baluchistan you That's look true. at what are the interests a lithium resources of wakhan corridor saying is very easy that it, it there's a there's a access to it uh from zinjiang i believe that's a very very difficult terrain and constructing road is almost well now impossible so that is why the route to afghanistan is through baluchistan and Absolutely. through bolan or uh, that is a um, uh, pass so in case a lithium is is the new oil and lithium is substantially there in afghanistan so therefore china is looking for that china is looking for gwadar china is looking for access to uh, persian gulf so therefore chinese have got too many interest in uh, um, uh, baluchistan so what sudhakar is saying uh, i tend to agree 30 maybe a little too ambitious in case if uh, pakistan and america do not uh, uh, wake up to the reality maybe by middle of the century <laughs> it may become <laughs> that is what my sense is Uh, sir jal sudhakar ji has keen few more questions but uh, i feel most of them have been answered sir so i will move ahead uh, the question next question is from colonel ak singh true general all the more reason why gilgit baltistan is important for india to be able referring oh, yes. to that uh, discussion we had sir no no absolutely right because uh, baluchistan pahunchega kaise china जब तक गिलगिट बाल्टिस्तान पे उसका कंट्रोल नहीं होगा एंड उसको करने के लिए एंड दैट इज इफ यू नोटिस हिज वन ऑफ द मेजर इंटरेस्ट इन दैट गलवान थिंग एंड आई मीन वन मस्ट सी थिंग्स नॉट इट इज टू प्रोवाइड अ शोल्डर टू हिज इंटरेस्ट इन सीपीसी सो दैट इज व्हाई ही वाज ट्राइंग टू ऑल दिस थिंग एंड दैट इज वेयर लॉट ऑफ रेलिवेंस ऑफ आवर प्रेजेंस 
strong presence in uh, say western portion of the say siachen and western portion of the ladakh becomes that much important so therefore uh, karakoram becomes very important going to uh, uh, say tunnel at saserla becomes very important so all those right. things very very important things are there i think next question sir is for mr lavina sir ask hakani can't appoint appoint his own commanders governors in his stronghold supreme leader does ofc there are groups like there are in every political party but he will never go against kandhar so Then, this is uh, numan sheik has asked you this sir, question so is this more like a statement than a question yeah so I actually agree. yeah so uh, afghan intelligence and afghan uh, ex intel officers and afghan uh, veterans have said it that hakani network actually wanted sala uh, sanaula uh, gafari to go and join uh, iskp so okay. you know i and, and anything is possible you know i mean i, I don't believe there's any um, make, they wanted iskp to start taking blame of all the attacks and uh, you know hakanis would uh, do it but iskp will uh, basically hakanis would give uh, command to iskp and they remain in control of iskp too so it makes sense to me and this is not really my statement it is the uh, ex ex intel officers of afghanistan and this is uh, from an article which is published on afghanistan international just yesterday so you know it's out there for everyone to read and uh, they they have actually uh, these veterans from afghanistan and ex ex intel officers they have countered a reuters report on it uh, on on sanaula gafari that he was not part of afghan army but part of uh, iskp he was a polytechnic student um who uh, in in kabul who had uh, joined uh, iskp and he's he's just 29 years i mean i really thought iskp uh, leader would be yeah. like someone who is in his late 50s or late 40s at least but this guy is just 29 years old you know so you want to say uh, ha rakesh uh, if you notice in afghanistan even in the, this durrani clan this pathans there is a gradation hmm. najibullah was killed because he was a lower caste pathan uh, ashraf bhari ran away because he was also lower but karzai is staying there abdullah hmm. abdullah is staying there so this is this is one part of it now just to put spanner in because this kandhar lobby in this case is becoming suddenly very strong with taliban's arrival and hakani's importance is reducing but hakani is a proxy for pakistan yeah so yeah. therefore hakanis will try to find some other uh, uh, create some more proxy just to keep afghanistan busy and so that is what that that noman shah sheikh or whatever his name is what says yeah. the merit and what lavina said i totally agree yeah. that uh, iskp and all those things are creation of uh, uh, their own internal dynamics of uh, say inter ethnic revel revelries yes. within uh, yeah. ethnicity intra uh, ethnic intra uh, ethnic revelry is the result of this kind of a thing so we running short of time one quick answer to this sir uh, ask namaste sir is it true that gawadar was offered to india by the sultan of oman in 1958 pakistan bought it after we refused i think the historical fact <laughs> yes in fact this uh, oman was in, in till till uh, till uh, murarji prime minister the the legal tender in uh, uh, monetary tender in uh, oman was indian rupiah which we refused so therefore uh, godar uh, was given to them and pakistan suddenly realized the importance of godar post 1971 war when uh, yeah. karachi was bombed yes. so they realized and that's why in 60s they had they had purchased, they had purchased. yes mm. when we had laid a blockade to karachi in 1971 that is the yes. time they realized yes. that they and have 60, to have they more have, than they have, one they started develop pool post 71 war this godar pasni both the yes yeah. 
Sir, I think uh, we have run out of time now. Lavina, you want to make a point? Please, quick. No, 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 sir. sir. I enjoyed the discussion completely. Uh, I learned so many things, especially the, sir, when it comes to history. Uh, sorry, uh, viewers, now we are running short of time, so I'm not taking any more questions. Uh, all it remains for me to say is thank you very much, Ms. Lavina, for being our guest. And uh, Jal thank Chaturvedi, you. sir, uh, thank you for your blessings and uh, your time. Uh, Thank you, sir, and Jai Hind. Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind.